am your host, Ed Troop, post Steelers wild card loss to the Buffalo Bills this afternoon by the final score of 31 to 17. The Steelers season ends with 10 wins and eight losses. Our post game show brought to you this evening by Vertical Athletics, premium cooling headbands, wet wave wear. Make sure you use keyword Oneberg on their site to receive a 10% discount. Well, the Steelers were 10-point underdogs going into this wild card game at Buffalo, a hot Buffalo Bills team coming in having won five straight. The Steelers having won three straight. Something was to give, but let's face it, not many people outside of Steeler Nation gave the Steelers a chance today, and those people were correct. As the Steelers went down early in this game, 21-0. Could have been a lot worse. They hung in there. They made it a one-score game in the fourth. They had a little bit of hope, but ultimately could not get the job done. Joining me here on the post-game show, as always, to talk about it is my good friend Brian Carruthers. And Brian, as we said, uh, not many people gave the Steelers a chance coming into this game, and those people ultimately were correct. It was disappointing. I mean, I think as a Steeler fan, Fan first, watching that game, you felt like something was going to break. If only the NFL played six quarters, we may have figured out how to do it. But, you know, 21 true unanswered points in the beginning of that game. It took us one half to even get on the board. It just, it, it never could happen. It just was the, the engine that just couldn't. Yeah, and at times it, it seemed like maybe they had a little bit of hope. Uh, they, they stopped the bleeding when it was 21 nothing. There was no hope. Uh, I think a lot of us were starting to think this was going to be another um, playoff blowout, 28-35 nothing, much like what we saw a year ago when the Steelers went to Buffalo and lost 38-3. to I was at was that going, game. That's a, that was a heartbreaker. Yeah, it was going down uh, that road, but the Steelers made some stops, got some breaks in this game, and were able to cut it, cut it to a 21-7 to game at halftime. So they were sticking around, and in the second half, they got some defensive stops, made it a one-score game in the start of the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden you start getting that feeling of, hey, we're back. This is what we've seen most of this year throughout our 10 wins throughout the season. This is usually how it happened. Uh, but Buffalo and Josh Allen, they made big plays when they, when they could. The benefit of some really uh, questionable penalties. Could have went either way there at the end, but it kept drives alive and ultimately kept the Bills in the victory column here this afternoon. Well, look, you got to hand it to Josh Allen and the Bills. They had a game plan going in, but it really is the difference in this league, right? And you look at the teams now and – I don't know what's going to happen with the box versus the Eagles. And we want to get everyone's comments up here as well. But the truth is, and Bill Belichick is living proof, you need to have a premier quarterback in the NFL. The Steelers do not. And while I give Mason Rudolph all the credit in the world for doing what he did today in Buffalo, he managed a very nice game. He mentally stayed in it. Physically, he stayed in it. And he kept us in it in the most manageable way possible. On the other side, Josh Allen, he kept it in it because he knows how to manage because he's an excellent quarterback, but he's next level. He had three splash plays in the beginning of that game. One of them was a 50-some yard run by him, and not everyone good can manage. He was just next level when he saw the opportunities. Rudolph never saw an opportunity for us for a quick score or even any momentum. Yeah, it was the Dawson Knox uh, nine-yard touchdown pass, the big tight end from Josh Allen in the first quarter with 7.02 to play to make it 7-0. And three minutes later, they strike again on the biggest uh, play. Probably they kind of put a uh, big stagger in the Steelers' heart, or at least early on in this game. Their other tight end, Dalton Kincaid, 29 yards from Josh Allen, 14 nothing at the end of one, and then it was 21 nothing when Josh Allen, as you just said, Brian, takes off 52 yards, fakes – the slide, much like Kenny Pickett did in the bowl game a couple years ago at Pitt, stayed on his feet, rumbled for 52 yards. It was 21 nothing with 7.01 to play in the second quarter. And again, I think most of us thought, here we go again, uh, much like uh, a couple years ago in Kansas City, back in 2020 at Cleveland at home, the divisional loss back in 18 at Jacksonville in the AFC Championship game, which Tom Brady and company in 2016 uh, ultimately uh, put up over 35 points against the Steelers that we were going to start to go down this path again. But the Steelers got things together. They scored with a minute 39 left in the second quarter. Deontay Johnson, a 10-yard touchdown pass from Mason Rudolph. 21-7 was the score at halftime. 
And again, the Steelers were starting to claw themselves back into this football game. Uh, but man, you just you you can't shoot yourself in the foot when you're on the road in a playoff game with the turnovers. Uh, a regular football game during the regular season, you know, if you're on the other side of the turnovers, you lose. In the playoffs, it's it's pretty much a hundred percent a given. When you turn the ball over more than the other team in the playoffs, you will lose. Well, keep in mind too, they weren't regular turnovers either. Let's look at the two that really changed this game which were what Allen was able to capitalize on. George Pickens' fumble in our own end turned into an instant seven points for the Bills. And Rudolph's interception on in the end zone, as we were trying to get a little momentum, changed everything. So it wasn't just that we dropped the ball, which, by the way, the Bills did not, but it was just we did it in the worst way possible, which was basically giving a, uh, a pro bowler I don't know if everyone's saying he's a future Hall of Famer. I'm not ready to crown him for that yet. But you gave a pro bowler basically a free ride into the end zone for for two easy points. And, and, and also for a team that needed any momentum that we could get, the Steelers, yeah, I mean, you, you suck the life right out of us. Now, I guess you could also say, well, they got a break when that Friar Muth um, – that Friar Muth fumble that was clearly a fumble received. All right, I guess we semantically we won that, and that was good for us. And so there's always those plays. I guess I would also say Josh Allen's uh, uh, 15 yard penalty when we when he was going to slide and Jack came in and slapped him, um, and they got called on that. Fine, I guess. But the two things that decided this game were our two stars. And now I again use that loosely, but Rudolph with some interceptions and George Pickens with that fumble early. Yeah, the Pickens fumble, uh, boy, that one hurt. Uh, they were starting to put together a little bit of a drive. And and again, you know, as good as Pickens is, he still shows how young he is in his NFL career. Uh, drops this football and just gives up on the play. Um, it's, you know, you got you to pounce on those footballs. You, you don't know if it's still going to be a fumble or not. I think he thought he was down. Ball comes out. Doesn't chase for it. Bills get it back. They they go down and score and take advantage in that situation. And uh, the interception by Mason Rudolph, you know, he looked like a backup quarterback in that situation, throwing it right he through did. the defensive back. As good as Rudolph has played, and, and like I said, he's the reason why we were in this playoff game, no doubt. Those three last games of the season, he had a lot to do with it. But, but in these types of situations in a playoff game, uh, second and goal right there where you absolutely need a score. You cannot turn the football over. He threw it right to the defensive back, and uh, Bills were back in business. Agreed. And let's turn. put up some comments from people because people want to get their uh, steam release. But let me just say this as we're getting those comments together. Um, have you ever been in a bad relationship and you think, man, this is going nowhere? We fight at dinner. We fight on vacations. I know. Let's have a baby. And you have a baby, and then like three years later, you get divorced. Or you think, let's go on a really expensive trip. And then when you get home, you hate each other again. That's kind of like the relationship version of Mason Rudolph. We needed something. This team was out of gas. Mason was kind of like our third oops baby to try to keep it going. And it just, you know, ran out of gas. And that's okay. We welcome your comments here on the Oneberg Black and Gold Post Game Show. I am Ed Troop alongside Brian Carruthers. The Steelers losing this wild card game, thirty-one to seventeen at Buffalo. Uh, by the way, our post game show, our black and white, or black and white. Boy, I feel like it's black. I tell you what was black and white today was uh, the Steelers uh, 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 picked to lose this game and pretty much came out and lost the game. That was pretty black and white from what we saw. But today's post game show is brought to you by Vertical Athletics Premium Cooling Headbands. Wet wave wear, use keyword one berg to receive. No, wet? You wet them? You wave wet them? Wet wave wear. And then you wear them. Put it on. Got them right here. Put it on. Everyone wants to see you put it on. Hey, do you guys want to see it? Yeah, just put it on real fast. You don't have to wear it during the whole show, but let's see it. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. It It's Premier. And you know who you know who wears these? Key Brian Hayes. He uh, wears the uh, the Pirate cool. Parrot mascot one that goes on. It looks awesome. Wait, How get a little this? closer there. There you go. Whoa. Right here, I got to pull up the camera. Whoa. How about that? Hey, dude, can I be honest with you? See, I got the bald head. Yeah. With that, ba with that bald head, you can do anything, man. Anything you want to wear, a bald head goes with it. This is the Vertical Athletics Cooling Headband right here, our sponsor for Beautiful. today's show. We appreciate them. Should I Beautiful. wear it the rest of the you show? Look good. Dude, you look, look great. Like I mean, Mr. Miyagi. Can I be honest with you? I was like Mr. Miyagi. I think everybody watching this thinks they can kick your ass. 
now, I think with them watching you with the uh, vertical athletics headband on, only 50% think they can. <laughs> That's probably about it. I, I I agree with you, man. I think those odds are those odds are pretty good. Yeah. Um, there you go. Women yeah, like for sure. Heads nowadays. Um, yeah. Well, look, just to back on track with this game, and there's a ton of comments for it. There's a lot of unanswered questions of where we go from here. Um, you know, I don't think Mike Tomlin is an issue that we're going to really legitimately talk about, but I think we're legitimately going to say, where do we go from here with Pickett, with Rudolph? And uh, do we hire a legitimate offensive coordinator? You know, there's rumors now that all these guys are going to be looking for a job. Do we go from there? Do we get some? It's just it, welcome to Pittsburgh Steeler offseason. We got a lot of questions and we don't even know. It's like the Facebook algorithm. We don't even know what the rules are, but we'll debate it. Well, I think one of the biggest uh, issues, and it could you, you can point to Mike Tomlin, you can point to the front office, you can point to whoever you want, is the bottom line of, of the Steelers at one time won playoff games. And if they lost playoff games, they were close games. They were freak things that happened. Not that that ever made it any better, right? There'd be a penalty or, or a late turnover or a fumble or something bizarre would happen and they would lose this playoff game. Man, I don't know about you, but I'm now to the point where I, I would love to see a heartbreak loss because now for the last <laughs> five playoff games, they have come out and just simply got blown out. Yeah, uh, I mean, this game This game ended up being a little bit closer. I know they made a one-score game in the fourth quarter, but let's just face it, man. Th th this game was a blowout. They were down 21-0. Yes, the game was of over course. at that point. And, and look look who's left in the, in the league, and we'll find out tonight in Tampa Bay. But look who's left. Teams that have dominant, dynamic quarterbacks that can lead their team. And Bill Belichick knows that because that's what that's what shoot them away from the Patriots, and it may shoot Tomlin away from the Steelers next year. But the teams that are in it, and everyone, including my man Tony Romo, the official Bills home announcer, <laughs> will say that this is Josh Allen's year. Then you'll say, oh, "I can't wait to see Mahomes versus Allen. I can't wait to see when Jalen Hurts comes and does this thing. I can't wait to see when when Lamar Jackson gets to do his thing next week." No one's like, man, I can't wait to see a poised Mason Rudolph manage a game for no points in the first half because it doesn't happen. Those jabronis, much love to Mason and respect, are out and we're out. And unfortunately, we're out and we have to figure out, is it picket? And if it's not, we must move on immediately. Yeah, they're going to have some interesting decisions to make in the offseason. I think the first and foremost thing you're going to see happen here probably relatively soon will be Mike Tomlin being extended uh, with his contract, whether Yinzer Nation likes it or not, that's going to happen. Unless Tom I like it, I like it. Do you like it? I do like it. I do it's like fine. it at this point. It's fine. it's fine. I mean, it's it's like I said, the <laughs> it's just a frustrating thing to be able to look at the last time they won a playoff game. Was How upset are you? It, take that. I know you have the coaling rag on your head. How upset are you? Because of all the Yinzers that I know. It's you, my man. How do you really feel about this Here, one? Here's what I feel like doing. I feel like just blindfolding myself here and going to sleep for the rest of the night. Just going to sleep and and, and forgetting about this, what I just watched for the last four hours. Yeah. Uh, man, it's yeah. just frustrating. I mean, absolutely. I'm a diehard Steeler fan. We've been doing this post-game show all year, and it's been a roller. I think the thing is it's a roller coaster of a ride. There are right. sometimes there are sometimes we came on this show this season. And we're like, man, the, the the season's over. And then they would bounce back, and then they'd win, or they, the, you know, they would pull something together where you thought, well, maybe they will put it together. Maybe we will be okay. Uh, t that's what happens each and every season: nine and eight, ten and seven, um, you know, eight and eight before they played the seventeen games. This right. is the type of mediocrity that 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 we've been experiencing for over ten years now. Uh, my my young son Brendan, who watches every Steeler game with me now, he's nine years old, I, and he was so upset today, more upset than me. Maybe I should have given him the headband. And I and I said to him, I said, buddy, I feel bad because you have not witnessed what we were able to witness uh, for the last twenty years. Well, up until the last ten years of the Steelers actually winning playoff games and making it to the AFC Championship game and making it to the Super Bowl. Uh, that generation right now, 9, 10, 11 years old, they're young, but they have not seen that. They have just seen the Steelers get blown out uh, at home against Cleveland, at Kansas City, today at Buffalo, uh, going back to Jacksonville at home and going back to that New England game. It sucks, man. But you have to admit we're somewhat spoiled, right? What you're talking about to your son and what Yinzers at night are tucking their kids into bed, we're talking about an elite opportunity for a fan base that we're always talking about 
the AFC Championship game and the Super Bowl. So in fairness, last night you're watching the game in Detroit where fans are crying, hugging each other because they finally won a game. It's the first time they've ever been alive for. Do you think we're on the path to the Lions? Do you think my son, who's 12, and your son, Brendan, who's 7, they're going to be at Heinz Field 20 years from now crying because we're dead and this is the first time they won a playoff game? Yeah, no, I, 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 I do? no, <laughs> no, I did. Well, I, I think you bring up a good point, Brian. And, and I, I want to get to Sean, um, Sean's comment here, which is pretty much what you're saying too. Would you rather have a team that always has a chance to make the playoffs or a team that only wins three to four games every five to six years? And, and that's oh. our, that's our big debate that we always talk about. That's what you're talking about too, with, you know, your son, Cy, my son, Brendan, um, what would you rather have? Would you would you rather them make it to the championship game or in the AFC or Super Bowl and then and then crap the bed the next five or six years or be nine and eight, ten and seven mediocrity, but make the playoffs every year? But here, but here's your end result. I for a long time believed in that formula, but I got to tell you, maybe I'm getting greedy, uh, maybe I'm getting spoiled, but I'm now to the point where I'm I'm not sure I like that formula anymore because I'm tired of seeing us get our heads bashed in in the first round of the playoffs. I think there's a lot of teams who would love to make the playoffs. So keeping in context that this league has a lot of parity, has a lot of dynamic players, what what the Steelers consistently do every year is an incredible feat. Now, that being said, you know, we're contempt, right? So we want these things to go further. But our level, our our waterline is so much higher because of, I guess, who we are and who we cheer for that – I guess I, you know, I, I'm okay with that. Let, let me know when we start making, when we start going in last place and and uh, don't make the playoffs and we can't, you know, we can't get above water and you and I are getting emotional over winning a ga- any game, then I think we're like, well, look, we're, we're we're on this path. We're like, you know, our kids won't have the same upbringing that we did. Uh, <laughs> it, but these things, I mean, Bill Cowher, who everybody wants, he won one, he lost one. Uh, Tomlin. He won one and he lost one. That's four Super Bowls during our lifetime. I'm 44 years old. That's four more Super Bowls than more than 20 teams have ever experienced. And so I'm not trying to say let's uh, let's not get drunk and go crazy tonight out of anger. I'm just saying to keep it in perspective, th- this train is still moving forward at a really high pace. The Steelers lose 31-17 to to the Buffalo Bills. Their season ends at 10 wins, 8 losses. The Bills go to 12-6. and They will host the Kansas City Chiefs next weekend in the AFC Divisional round. That should be a great game between those two teams. Hey, Uh, can I do an impression for you? You want to play charades? Please. All right, I'm going to do an impression. You tell me who I am. Taylor Matt, Swift. Canada, Matt Canada watching this oh, game today. I, I was going to say Taylor Swift. I thought you were going down a Kansas City Chief. Uh, no, right there. Matt Canada watching this game, hoping that every player gets hurt and Tomlin has a heart attack on the field. <laughs> yeah, that could definitely be it, man. I mean, Matt Matt Canada is uh, ultimately, you know, his offensive system after he got fired again a roller coaster of a ride. There were some weeks where it looked really good, other weeks not so much, but it definitely looked a lot better with Mason Rudolph. Uh, at the quarterback position. Rudolph finishes the game 22 of 39, 229 yards, two touchdowns and interception. Uh, Pat Fryermuth, good game at tight end, five catches, 76 yards. Pickens, five catches for 50 yards. Um, there's two things I want to talk about here with you. Okay. Um, uh, in this game that was during the three-game winning streak, we saw them run the ball very well. Well, today, not so much. Jalen Warren, eight carries, 38 yards. Najee Harris, 12 carries, 37 yards, 106 total yards as an offense. Uh, Najee Harris went three straight games over 100 yards by himself during the win streak. Um, Also, when you take a look at getting pressure on Allen, Golden had a sack, Highsmith had a sack, Steelers had two sacks today. But here's here, my friend, is is one big thing I think that really stood out to me. Um, The Steelers were not penalized very much at all during the three-game win streak. I think they had a total of six penalties in three games well they had six today six penalties for 50 yards and there were some costly penalties at some very key moments of that football game um i think 
we talked about it during the week on the um, pregame show earlier this week, the preview show. If the Steelers were able not to commit penalties and run the football, they would have a good chance to win this football game. Well, they weren't able to run the football, and they had five penalties for 60 yards. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you look at those, um, excuse me, six penalties for 50 yards, when you look at those six penalties, they were at very costly times uh, that cost them field position. No no doubt, but I will say this. When when they were doing the pregame show, uh, Coach Cower, of course, Bill Carr, Crafton's own homeboy, said, you know, he's going for the Steelers, go with his heart. I think we all were there. Now, they said, well, look, here comes Rudolph, here comes these guys. They have nothing to lose, right? They're the renegades out there, renegade. They're out there with nothing to lose. And I beg to differ. Watching that game, we played like we had everything to lose. We took no shots. We took no chances. We made, we didn't mix anything up. We didn't do any trickery. Buffalo played like there was nothing to lose. And there probably right. wasn't because they probably knew deep down that they're just better. And so they managed and they played with nothing to lose while we sat back like we were trying to protect this glorious running game or this great arm. It, it reminded me of the way Peyton Manning ran the uh, the Broncos in the playoffs when they went to the Super Bowl. It, it just manage it. Don't mess up. Don't make mistakes. Just stay focused. And and, and I think that was that that's the way the teams have nothing to lose. Um, like Manny, he had nothing to lose. Today, man, we played conservative. It was exciting to watch. It was manageable. And again, I think Mason has secured a job down the road this offseason with a team that might need someone to manage them when the times are tough. But to win games, win playoff games, the Bills didn't play scared. And we just uh, we were just a, a wor- an unworthy adversary. And I don't think we stunk. I thought we were non-existent. I think they played against the Washington Generals today, and they won. Yeah, on the flip side of that, uh, what we were talking about, formula for victory or loss, when you talk about penalties, Bills only two penalties for 24 yards, and they were able to run the ball for 179. Wow. A lot of injuries out there, man. It felt like every other play, someone was messed up. It, it was, and, and, and just the – just to look at Josh Allen's numbers, 203 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, how about this? On the ground, Allen, eight carries for 74 yards. Um, just just amazing. And, you know, he has continued to do that throughout his career. It's one thing I was worried about with the Steelers today, with all the injuries they've had at their inside linebacker positions. And let's face it, Miles Jack, Eric Rowe at the safety position, these guys have come in off the street and did a solid job. But there was a reason why those guys were on the street at that time during the season. And uh, Josh Allen. You only only can have one feel-good defensive player that you could feel good about. Our whole team was a feel-good. We're like, hey, Patrick Peterson, you're 90 years old, but you're still doing it. Good work. Joey Porter Jr., your legacy. Let's go, baby. Then all of a sudden, these, like, dishwashers and, like, guys who worked at, like, car washes showed up. It's like, man, this is is a feel-good. This is like Tomlin's orphanage. We're bringing people in. You know, Flacco was a feel good for Cleveland because they have a dominant defense and a great offense, and he was the feel good to base it around. Man, this was like, I mean, this was out of like an Adam Sandler movie, man. He drove a school bus down the street yelling, Who plays football? And we took them. So, it, it, and adding in there, all pro, all life, future Hall of Famer, the man that my wife would leave me for, TJ Watt, he's not in that game. So, when you put yes. in Miles Jack and the rest of these guys without TJ Watt, it's a joke. That's a good point. You know, we didn't even really touch on the the fact that T.J. Watt did not play in this game uh, today. Would he have made a difference? You would hope that maybe he would have. But again, T.J. Watt played in these last few playoff games where they uh, lost big at Kansas City and Cleveland at home. And yes, no, no doubt. But I mean, you want him in there, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt. Steelers yeah. fall thirty-one to seventeen against the Buffalo Bills. Brian, looking ahead. Uh, in at least the AFC, one more game tonight, the Eagles at the Buccaneers. That game just kicking off right now. Yeah. Uh, that will wrap up Wild Card Weekend. You'll have your final four in the NFC. And, and let me say, that, that will wrap up the state of Pennsylvania for professional football this year as well because the Eagles are on a shit train as well, just like us. Pennsylvania <laughs> will be officially eliminated from the playoffs in about four hours. 
Yeah, that's like that's kind of uh, that's that's kind of, that's kind of what 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 you're looking at at this situation with uh, boy the Eagles are are sure banged up. AJ Brown's not playing tonight. Uh, Jalen Hurts has a broken finger, I think, or a dislocated finger. He's out there playing with it. So uh, Tampa Bay has a good chance to know with Baker Mayfield as their quarterback. Yeah. How about that? But look, and you know, if- when you think about the league, right? I mean, dude, and you're talking about all these shows that we've done and the post game shows, and everyone lives and breathes through this team. And now that it's over, we can hopefully take a break and let our brains decompress a little bit but that's the beauty of the nfl and that's exactly how they want it they showed where the eagles came into or when the buffalo bills went into uh philly earlier this year and philly humiliated them and they're showing you know jalen walking out doing the flexing and it was their off week and that was the end and then things changed the Eagles are now on the outside looking in. They're going to be eliminated tonight, but the Bills rise. So it's a long season. It's built for excitement. It's built for drama. It's just, again, I, I, the missing piece is this quarterback. If it is Pickett, great. I don't coach in the NFL. You guys make that decision. But we watch enough games, and here we are talking about it, right? So we have to figure out this quarterback situation absolutely. We should. Tomlin should be writing in a notebook on, his, on, on the flight home from Buffalo right now. Yeah, that's uh, that, that that's a good point with that, and, and it's going to be interesting to see what they do because Mason Rudolph's a free agent, so you know will he get some looks at other places? Where are the Steelers? Will they be able to retain him? Does he want to come back here? Does he not want to come back here? He wasn't given a shot till these last four games. Wait, are you um, signing him? What, what's I, your as a Steeler fan, right? What is your response if you find out that we sign Mason Rudolph to a three year deal? And uh, it's going to be a fight at camp. Is that something you want as a Steeler fan? Or do you want to hear that, you know, we're going to lay low, be quiet, let the Super Bowl go by. But somewhere in like April or May, Tomlin will give a quote to say that Pickett's our guy. I think that you uh, bring Mason Rudolph back. You sign him as a free agent, bring him back in, have him compete against Kenny Pickett in training camp. And I also think you have to go out and sign a veteran quarterback, and you try to also draft another quarterback this upcoming draft. So I think so you, you want have part, you want it to be a party of four, a party of four. I think a picket Rudolph, hmm. a draft pick, and a free agent, a veteran to come in here. Now, more or less, that veteran pick I think would be more of a backup type situation because I think what you can possibly do, Brian, if it's very glaring in the preseason and training camp that. Uh, Pickett or Rudolph is your guy, you could trade the other one. Trade the other one during camp. Maybe somebody needs a quarterback. And then and then you have that veteran quarterback you signed as your backup, and then you have a third quarterback who's your draft pick that you can try to develop. And what That's happens with Trubisky? At the Trubisky's gone. We'll never hear from him again. What's that? Trubisky's gone. Oh, yeah, I think so. He'll be, on the, Steeler, he'll be on the Steeler cruise line next year I, signing autographs with Cordell. I think I, I think yeah I think so I think Trubisky's gone man I'd, I'd be I mean he does still have one more year left on his contract but I I, I think that uh, that ship has sailed don't you Oh, 100 percent 100 percent Hey we uh, welcome your comments here on Oneberg we do want to let you know that today's post game show is being brought to you by Vertical Athletics Premium Cooling Headbands Wet Wave Wear Use the keyword Oneberg and receive a 10 percent discount and I've been putting it on all show. Put it on again. This is the headband right here. I'm going to start wearing this. Yeah. You know what it looks like? Remember when Ryan Shazier, when he was injured in Cincy, uh, when he came out, no shirt and the freezing cold and just wore like the thing? It looked like he had that on, but like over his face. Maybe, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should just start, you know, wearing this. This is the good look right here. It's almost like a, I'm looking at it. It's almost like a thirst trap. Like you got like a white Tupac look going with that (laughs) Bettis, that sweet Bettis jersey, that, that hoodie. Wait, West Side? You're now part of West Side Cannonsburg? Here we go. West Side. Whoa, look at that. Let's go, baby. It's fantastic. Let's go. Look, I got it reminds me of Dobbs. Now, wait a minute. Does Sean think what we're talking about remind or do or do I remind you of do I look like Josh Dobbs? Does Ed Troop look like Josh Dobbs? Ryan Barrich asks us, do the Steelers look elsewhere for an offensive corner? Yes, Ryan. I do not think they're going to retain uh, who they have now, the, um, the two that they have in there. I think they will go outside the organization to bring in an offensive coordinator. There's going to be some good names for them to pick out there as well. Uh, I don't Sean know. does confirm the headband. All right, just the headband. Who else we got? What other comments we got? Ed? Who else is talking to us tonight? Shafee, your buddy Shafee 
checks in. If the Lions win the Super Bowl, will Dan Campbell be invited to the White House with the team concerned he stormed the Capitol on January 6th? I didn't know he did this, but I heard it from a couple of guys a few weeks back. Great show, guys. <laughs> hey, Shafee, we got to tell you, man, congratulations to your Detroit Lions. I watched the entire, well, I watched all the playoff games this weekend, but that one in particular last night, what an awesome atmosphere that was in Detroit. I've long said, and Brian's going to throw something at me, but it is true. It is true. Okay. The Detroit Lions are the Pittsburgh Pirates of the NFL, or vice versa. The Pittsburgh Pirates are the Detroit Lions of Major League Baseball. So to see that atmosphere, to see that winning, a winning playoff atmosphere, after all those years of losing and losing and losing, you finally win a playoff game at home. Man, it was awesome. Did Brian, did you happen to see Dan Campbell's uh, post-game rant in the locker room? It was awesome. It was and then he got pardoned by Trump right after the game, which was incredible. He did. Incredible he moment. Did. No, it was exciting. The game in, in Ford Field last night did remind me a lot of the blackout game uh, with the Pirates versus the Reds, where I just think this fan base comes together and just has one instant Detroit Lion orgasm all at once and because it's built up over all these years. It was the Cueto game for the Pirates. We're still trying to find it. But, look, I don't want to burst Shafee's bubble. And, and, Ed, I know you don't want to hear this. If we're talking about things we don't want to hear, the Steelers, you and I, are always going to be talking about the playoffs. It's just what we do as Steeler fans. Shafee, enjoy this run because just like the Pirates, maybe that organization is just not built to do this every single year. Yeah, and Detroit, I, I think, has a great opportunity in front of them to get to the NFC Championship game. Um, we're going to talk about the playoff matchups here in a second before we uh, cut things loose. Hey, we want to let you know that the Bubba Show checks in. Yes. Free Buffalo dip tomorrow at Buffalo uh, at Bubba's – I almost said Buffalo. Bubba's Gourmet Burgers and be uh, Beers in South Point on Tuesday. How about that, Brian? There you go. Well, what are we celebrating with that? That now Buffalo, we're, we we can digest Buffalo a little bit easier if it's free. I mean, and hey, free's free. I don't care if we won or lost. If you're going to give me something free, don't forget all these guys. Even Jack, who I said worked at a car wash, he's going home to live a better life than I live. Well, so well, I need anything free that I can get. So thank you, Bubba. I'll take it. Everyone, go to Bubba. Put on your uh, vertical athletic cooling headbands. Go to Bubba, eat the buffalo wings that are very hot, and it'll keep you nice and cool. Well, you got to give credit to Bubba, man. He he got national attention for outlaw or what did he what did he not even outlaw? But he took it off his menu, buffalo sauce for the entire week. Right, you couldn't get buffalo wings at Bubba's. And and this story, I woke up at like two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. I turn on World News Tonight, which the only people watching that are, are crazy people, right? That are up at that hour. Right. And uh, there's a story about Bubba on national television outlawing uh, uh, <laughs> Buffalo, Buffalo. And I'm just, I'm making this whole story up, but well, it did get national attention. Off? It did get national oh. attention, didn't it? Well, look, I loved it. And I watched a lot of the comments, you know, as being part of one Berg, you look at everything that's going on online. You try to find what's interesting. I think this is look, and everyone's like, "Oh, how do you like it now, Steelers? You were so big, and the the you had the billboard that said Josh Allen and OJ and that was the awesome. Buffalo Wings." And look, guys, this is just fandom. Do the Bills suck? Yes, they still suck. I don't care. I still hate Cleveland. There are a bunch of jabronis. Art Modell, rest in hell. All of it, guys. I'm still aboard the Steeler train, but it's just fandom. It's fun, and if you're a Buffalo fan, make the best of it because next week. We're on the outside looking in, unfortunately. But everyone go to Bubba for some buffalo wings. Bubba checks in. No, our buffalo sauce is so good, and since everybody's so pissed, this will help them with getting over their buffalo sauce withdrawal. Oh, people want go. to get back to the buffalo sauce. That's it. Wow. Hey, looking ahead, I, I know you always enjoy this, my friend. The Steelers' 2024 opponents. I know you love okay. this. Right? Wait, we're already – we're going we're gonna to shift gears well, to next just, season. Just real quick, and then I want to talk about the playoffs, and we'll get out of here. Playoffs? But, uh, but uh, of course, the Steelers will host Baltimore, Cleveland, and Cincinnati, as they always do. They get the AFC West next year. So they will host Kansas City and the Chargers, and they will go to um, next year on the road. They will go to Denver and Las Vegas again. Uh, they will host the Dallas and the Giants. Um, that is the NFC East. So the AFC West, they play the NFC East. So they will host the uh, Dallas Cowboys and the Giants, and then they'll get Indianapolis or the Jets at home. They'll go to Baltimore, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Denver, Las Vegas, like I said. They will go to Philadelphia and Washington next year and Atlanta. 
and then Indianapolis or the Jets, depending okay. on how that all shakes out. So that's going to be a lot of fun. A lot. Look, this momentum never dies. The Steelers are omnipresent, just like the Lions are. It's your fan base. So, am I looking forward to next year? Yes. Do you need a little bit of break from the beginnings of? Um, all the way from the beginnings of camp where Kenny Pickett was your home run champion all the way to we were booing him off the field. We fired Matt Canada. We wanted to fire Tomlin. We wanted to kill anybody. Then George Pickett was a nu nuisance. Then he was a god. Then Mason Rudolph, who hasn't played for a full year, we wanted him dead. Uh, and then we brought him in. Rudolph, will you guide my sleigh tonight? He did it. New Year's Eve, New Year's Mason Rock and Eve. He wins. We beat Seattle. Pete Carroll gets fired. Bill Belichick beats us. Then he gets fired. Tomlin's going to survive. And now we lose and we're flying home after a massive three-foot blizzard covered Buffalo for three days. And we thought that that was going to be the great equal. Uh, I need a little bit of a break, guys. Take a breather, right? Take a breather. It is yeah, the black and gold. back ready to go. It is the black and gold post-game show here on Oneberg each and every week during the regular season. Brian and I broke down the post game, except for that one week where Brian slept uh, during the post game show. And I did it entirely myself. What uh, game was that that I fell asleep? The, that was a Sunday night or Monday night game. That was a, I think that was the Thursday night game. Actually, we heard you snoring on the other end and I just shut you off and let you sleep through it. Uh, but, I did fall asleep during that game. And I woke up at like three in the morning and it was like, Hey, ready to go on ready. Hey dude, are you awake? Catch you next time. Still alive. Catch you next yeah, time. You're still alive. But the Black and Gold Post Game Show brought to you by our friends at Vertical Athletics, premium cooling headbands, wet wave wear, use keyword Oneberg for a 10% discount. Uh, the playoff matchups for next weekend, very quickly. Um, on Saturday at 4.30, these are divisional round games. You got the Texans at the Ravens, and then you have the Packers at the 49ers in the nightcap. How about the Packers becoming the first seventh seed, not the Steelers, the Packers the first seventh seed, the beat a number two seed. They completely uh, crushed Dallas yesterday well Very don't forget in our playoff preview i called that the cowboys are perennial losers in the playoffs i guess people like you ed will say that now the steelers are perennial losers but no one lose a loses a playoff games like the cowboys huh and how beautiful last night five thousand people waiting for jerry jones to come out of like wherever he was like a janitor's right. closet to address who he might fire who might go crazy you know in fairness and in comparison what do you want what don't you want I'd rather live through some uh, Rooney drama-less seasons where I you agree. don't have a owner come in and play these games. And for the most part, you don't have Tomlin play these games than, you know, have Jerry Jones on the sideline and Jerry, it's like, you know, Jerry Maguire, who's coming, who's going, all that drama. I guess I'd take realistic drama over Disneyland and Jerry World. I, I agree with you, my friend. Yeah. I agree. It, it's, but we needed that pat. We needed a Packers type of game. But don't forget, the Packers came out like the Steelers didn't, firing, 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 taking yes. chances against a really good quarterback. We didn't do that, and so you know we managed ourselves back onto the plane to fly home and and uh, clean out the locker. So you got the Texans at the Ravens, the Packers at the Niners. Uh, the winner of tonight's game between Tampa Bay and the Eagles, which, by the way, the Buccaneers up 3 nothing towards the end of the first quarter in that one. Uh, they will go to Detroit. They will play the Lions next Sunday at 3 o'clock. And then to wrap up the divisional game weekend, you have the Chiefs at the Bills uh, next Sunday night. That should be a good one from Buffalo. Um, I got to tell you, my friend, I, I, I'm really on the Lions train right now. Um and I think the Packers are going to upset the Niners. So I think you're going to see a Packers Lions NFC Championship game. Well, what a over surprise. The AFC, you were on the Rudolph think... train too. You were the guy who Rudolph won't you guide my sleigh tonight? It felt good on Christmas. And now yeah. you want this guy, <laughs> you want this guy dead. He wasn't the right move for us. Of course you're with the Lions. It's the emotional feel good. Let's hope the Lions win. But the truth is, I, I don't think they can, do you? R realistically. I Win the whole thing, like the whole the the entire. No, I don't think they can win the whole thing, but I think they're going to get to the NFC Championship game. I think it's going to be them and the Packers uh, playing in the NFC Championship. They're going to be hosting an N NFC Championship game and maybe maybe get to the Super Bowl. Will they win the Super Bowl? I don't know. I, I'm not going to make that prediction yes. yet. Uh, over in the hey, A, can I just say how great the AFC? How great Taylor Swift is in a suite, a box, and she's giving some high fives, which is great. Who was in the crowd last night with the fans? Marshall Mathers, enough said. A man exactly. of the people, just like Shakey Abraham. Go. 
And the mom, mom spaghetti got national attention. They showed him making uh, making the mom spaghetti, which is kind of fun. I went to the Pirates Tigers game earlier this year, and I went to Mom Spaghetti, which is right across the street. It's next to the Little Caesars World headquarters in downtown Detroit. You can't go into Mom Spaghetti. You order and you go, but they make you wait in a um, like an alleyway. And no offense to Eminem, I'm a big fan, but that alleyway smells like garbage. It smells like everything that's left over from the financial <laughs> crisis in Detroit is set there to rot. Maybe uh, not everything- very appealing. Maybe everything from the movie Eight Mile was left there with Eminem. Back yeah, all day. Kim Basinger's like ripped oh. up clothes and stuff she didn't shower in gets thrown in that alleyway, and you got to smell it before you eat it that. Was, pasta. Brittany Murphy was the love interest of Eminem in that movie. Remember Brittany Murphy? Oh yeah, she was hot for a long she time. Was. Brittany she was hot. Might. Hey, she don't forget, Kate, and don't discount Kim Basinger who played his mom. She was hot for a long time. Absolutely, absolutely. She yep. was hot then too. She she was. Uh, you know, yeah. That's behind that movie. But yeah, I Brittany just, Murphy was where it was at for a long time. It's funny how yes. they kind of come and go. You see, like I saw Natalie Portman the other night, and I guess she's still somewhat of an acclaimed actress or af- or actor. Uh, but remember, she was like the biggest thing in the world, as far as like um, like sex symbols go, and people loved it. And let me tell you who you need to look up. I, I always say to Ed, anytime I'm talking, I'm like, follow this person on Instagram. But there is a show on Netflix, and let me just pull it up because she's on there all the time. Uh, It's not going to be here, is it? Uh, Oh, shoot. Where is this person? She's a British actress. Ah, I can't find her. But look, look it up. It's called Fool Me Once on Netflix. And the girl who stars as like in the thriller, absolutely beautiful, will be the next. um, It will be the next Natalie Portman. Wow. So there you go. There's Brian's take on that Netflix. Uh, Check it out. You're always giving good Netflix recommendations to me. Hey, who is the person that turned you on to Pat Sajak's daughter? Exactly. And uh, who's the other, the owner's wife of the Chiefs? The Chiefs. uh, Gracie Gracie Hunt. Hunt. There you go. So Uh, Look, I should have my own show. Who It it would be called One Bird Presents Who's Half Nude on Instagram. I don't know what the algorithm wants me to see, but I'm just a, I'm a participant. I'm not even a willing participant. I don't sign up for it. It's just what the algorithm gives me. But I feel like I'm in an expert position now uh, of who is looking great on Instagram. That'll be a new show coming soon to Oneberg. I was gonna say you have you you have the sandwich show, right? Yeah. Of course, we got our we got our sports show here. You got your uh, the incline show, and now you're yeah. gonna add this. Uh, who's hot on Instagram? I love that's it. it. And maybe we'll bring people on. We'll show their videos. All of that good stuff. Brian, what's your final thoughts on the uh, Steelers 2023 season? Success, not a success, underachieve, overachieve. What do you think? Look, we made the playoffs. I know nobody likes to hear that at all. We made the playoffs. We were competitive. We had a good run. We did it with a third-string quarterback. I mean, was this a legendary year? No. Did we ever reasonably think that we would hoist the Lombardi in Las Vegas? Maybe during preseason we did, um, but we also thought we'd beat Buffalo because there was a snowstorm coming. So, look, let's keep it in perspective. It's still a successful year for us. We have a lot of questions going into the future. The Steelers are at the beginnings of a crossroad, the post Roethlisberger crossroad. We still are trying to experience life after Ben, and I think we'll see Tomlin exit at some point. Not right now, and I'd be surprised if he's not back next year. But we have to make some serious decisions. I think this team looks totally different going into like 2026. I think this will be uh, people will fill these spots that we've never seen before. We're destined yeah, I got, for it. I, I I I tend to agree with you, my friend. Uh, I think one thing that gets lost in tra- um, you know uh, during the season when we start talking about winning and losing with the Steelers is they're still in a rebuilding mode. Um, they lost their franchise quarterback just a couple seasons ago uh retiring with big ben and it takes it takes a good while to the the reload now you can make the argument and look at a team like the green bay packers they get rid of aaron Rodgers, jordan love who was there for a few years now looks like one of the best quarterbacks in the nfl right now wait a second Hold, this is the problem he is not one of the best quarterbacks in the nfl you don't he's think had a good run oh man i think jordan loves i think he's gonna be good i think you're he's ready gonna, I think he's good now, and I think he's going to continue to be real good for Green Bay. I hope you're right. I, I, I root uh, as is CJ Stroud for the Texans. Oh, for the Texans, these too. guys are studs. Yeah, these guys they're they're on their way. And don't um, you think you know but, right away? And that's my problem with Pickett is 
it doesn't take long anymore, especially for quarterbacks. These guys are tested on the field in these big power five uh, games every single week. The draft is so smart. The league is so smart. I think you know within graciously two seasons if this is going to work or not. And that's what I'm worried about with Pickett is I think he may be on the Steeler cruise in two years signing autographs <laughs> with LeVon Kirkland and Slash Stewart because he might not have it. These guys rise really fast, and I don't see it, man. I, I guess that's my parting word to you is I don't see it. Yeah, it could, it could change quickly. I mean, this was the year of the backup quarterback in the NFL that was good for a few weeks, then they weren't. Uh, look at Josh Dobbs. Uh, look at Joe Flacco yesterday with the Cleveland Browns, or two days ago, rather, on Saturday. Uh, he showed us why he was Joe Flacco. Uh, Mason Rudolph uh, was strong these last three games, but today, you know, a little bit up and down at times. Kind of showed you why he's a backup quarterback for the Steelers, especially with that yeah. inter costly interception in the end zone. Um, so I definitely get it, man. I, I definitely get it. I, I think overall, when you look back at the Steelers' season, it depends at what part of the Steelers' season, in my opinion, you look at whether it was a success for, or not. We came out of the preseason uh, thinking that this this offense was going to be unstoppable. Kenny Pickett was 5-for-5 five five on drives in the preseason with touchdowns. They weren't going to be stopped. And then San Francisco comes out and slaps them in their face, and you and I get on this show thinking, what the heck just happened? Uh, there were other times during, during the season where they kind of got it together, and you thought maybe they were going to be okay. And then they go on the three-game losing streak, losing – back-to-back -back weeks at home against Arizona and New England, two two-win teams, and then they go to Indianapolis and get embarrassed on a Saturday. The season's over. But then they come back. They win three straight games. They make the playoffs. So depends, in my opinion, what part of the season you're looking at, whether it was a success or not. I think ultimately, though, once again, you have another season without a playoff victory, and that's a bummer. Uh, let's see. Lee said, have you mentioned Tomlin needs fire? There's our buddy, Sidney A. Bernstein. I don't know. He's lost. He's off his rocker today. Permani sucks. Everything's awful. Take your meds. Good evening, Sydney. Oh, Tampa Bay is up 10, nothing. Hey, I just saw an article come over that Cam Hayward has said that it's been a very long season for him and he's going to need the off season to figure out what's next. Yeah, Cam Hayward could be one of those guys that could be hanging it up, man. He's been around for a while, and uh, you know he was banged up at different times of this season. He's he, when he's still at a hundred percent, he's still very effective, but he wasn't as much a hundred percent throughout the season. So, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting to see with Hayward. Um, interesting to see what they do with Rudolph. Najee Harris has a fifth-year option that. You know, midway through the season, I think we were all in here barking about that would not be picked up. They were going to move on from Najee Harris, but he had a pretty good run there towards the end of the season. So now you got to start thinking maybe they do keep Najee for another season, bring him back. Wait, this is going to be year. next year is going to be Najee's fifth year as a Steeler. Yeah, he has a fifth oh year option. I'm there. so close to the grave. My life is flying Sorry. by. Hard to believe. Huh. Uh, I, I still thought Merrill Hodge played for us. The, the I think one of the biggest disappointments is we wasted another year of TJ Watt in his prime. Um, he is a special player. He's a guy you build a championship around. And yet here we are. TJ Watt has never won a playoff game. How about that? Mm. Um, hard, hard to believe, yeah. but that's, that's what it is, man. And, and we're in the playoffs. I mean, we were giving him a chance to do it. I mean, he, he was right. injured. Unfortunately, he's making the most money of anybody in the whole world. So, I mean, He's, he's here, but I agree with you. You want to see him start to get it, but I, I, I'm more worried about me and you. I want one for us. I'm not worried about what. Let's right. get one for us. You Let's said your son now hasn't seen a, a win since he's been born. I need it for him. Let's not worry about what. He'll be okay. Well, here he is. Come here, Brendan. He's going to work on Monday. We need this. Well, here he is. I'm going to bring him in. He just ran into the room. Oh, great. There he is. Hey. Group live on Oneberg on the Black and Gold post game show, and Brendan – You've never seen a playoff victory. Oh, yeah, I get, you have. You were in 2016. He was two years old, so you would have saw one then. There you go. That's right. Boy, you guys look great tonight in your matching jerseys. What do you have? Bettis and Mika. Mika. Not not fast Willie Parker. but Yeah, well, I thought it was Willie Parker for a second. Brendan, That's how old are you? Tell everybody hello. Say hi. Hi. There you go. Man, a few words. Look Brendan at how, I mean, this kid, how many girlfriends does he have? Handsome. Zero. Good. Keep it that way. You can't have fun in life once you get tied right, down. Who, who wins the Super Bowl this year? Uh, either 
San Francisco or Baltimore. Now, won't you tell everybody why? Because it is, is it because the script was written and on the Super Bowl logo it is purple and red? Well, what you've been telling you about for two weeks now? What's that, that is all the predictions, but it's not really that. They're just the number one seeds, and also both of their offenses are on like really good. See, They're both their awesome. offenses are really With good. CMC, Kittle, Fred Warner on the defense, Nick Bosa on the defense, with Tredavious Ward also. So he knows his stuff. Baltimore hey. with Lamar and Roquan Smith and stuff. So Roquan Smith and stuff. There hey, you go. If you're gone, I think you're going to be replaced next season with the Brendan Troop Show. Good step up. Step up. There you go. See a loser. Yeah. See a loser. It's Brendan's time. Yep. There you go. There you go. All right, buddy. Thank you. There he goes. Brendan Troop telling Did you. you shove him away? I shoved him. There it is. I said, get out of here. He's cute. My He's show. The He's Look the who's pictures on the logo right there. I love it. Look who's pictures on the logo. Ed Troops. There. there right there. Ed Troops logo. Oh, I can't get over there, but it's there. Yes. We'll leave it out. We'll, how about Alexander checks in. TJ Watt led the league in every meaningful category for pass rusher in the league. Decided it in week eight. Defensive player year was going to be Garrett. Yeah, you know, it should be Watt, not Garrett. But there's a good chance it's going to be Miles Garrett. The NFL seems to be in love with Miles Garrett this year to get that award. Uh, the Browns were, much like Detroit, a good story in the AFC. But I uh, can't deny T.J. Watt, man, 19 sacks. And he has, uh, you know, again, just every time he's on the field, makes a big play for this defense. Um, that's going to do it for our show, Brian. Uh, I enjoyed it every single week this year. It was fun. We'll do it again next year. And thanks, and everybody, for watching. More fun to come on one bird for the rest of your lives until we all die. Again, our black and gold postgame show brought to you by Vertical Athletics, premium cooling headbands, wet wave wear. Use keyword one bird on their site to receive a 10%. Discount. And I need, to lose some, I need to lose some weight. I'm going to return back next year in better game shape. I, I'm really looking heavy. You look great, Ed. And one look last at this face. This can't be the face of what happens on this show. So I promise everybody I'm going to work hard in the off season to look better. Yes, sir. I, uh, I think you look good already. I don't think you have to do that. I think you look good. My friend, do well, thank not you change very much. a thing. Do not thank change a much. thing. Do not change a thing. So thank that'll you. do it for our post game show. We want to thank everybody for tuning in this season. Once again, the Steelers lose the wild card game at Buffalo by the final score of 31 to 17, their season ends at 10 wins and eight losses. Make sure you keep it logged on here to One Berg and One Berg Nation on YouTube and on Facebook and all our social media as we have more programming to entertain you as we go throughout. We will see you next time.